Hybrid Calculus. This lesson is going to deal with quadratic formula and the discriminant. So this entire chapter, we're going to be studying quadratics, which means we're looking at equations and functions that have x squared in them. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first one right here. It says to solve by factoring, solve by factoring. Okay, it is an equation. It has an equal sign. Keep your equal sign. Everything is already on one side with the zero, so I'm going to begin my factoring. Right equals zero. So we have x, uh, let's see, minus 7, and then plus 6. So we have x equals 7, and x equals negative 6. So this problem said solve, okay, and here they are. These are the two solutions, the two solutions. So what happened is I let the y number be 0, and I found these x values. Okay, so what these are essentially are the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are 7, 0 and negative 6, 0. Okay, so when it says draw a graph, we're going to let the y number equal 0. We're going to solve. So it's touching the x-axis here at 7, and it's touching here at negative 6. Uh, this is a parabola opening up, okay, opening up, touching the x-axis x -axis two times, okay, and there is the graph of the parabola, the quadratic function with two x-intercepts. All right, let's try another one. Solve by factor. Um, so we start, we have an x squared, let's put x and x equals to 0. The way that you make a 1 is 1 times 1, and then they have to add to a 5. I don't think that's working, let's see. Let's try, hmm, that's not working. Let's try an MA table, let's try, an, let's try a different strategy. So 1 times 1 is 1, and the add number is 5. That's kind of what I was doing before. I don't think I can get any numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 5. Okay, this is not working. This does not factor. This does not factor. Okay, so what's going on here? Is this a quadratic? Yeah, this is a quadratic. This is a parabola. Okay, right there. This is a quadratic. This is definitely a parabola. Okay, we're not going to say the parabola doesn't exist. I just can't figure out where it touches the x-axis, okay? And that's kind of where the quadratic formula comes in to help, all right? The quadratic formula helps us, okay, to find the solutions to a quadratic equation, to a quadratic equation, okay? So let's just make sure we're clear here with our vocabulary. There's a quadratic formula, and he helps us solve quadratic equations, all things quadratic. And here's how it goes. X is equal to, okay? So we're solving, we're finding the solutions. This means to solve. So when you do that, make sure you start with X equals. Sometimes people forget to say that. Uh, X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And where do these ABC numbers come from? Well, they come from your quadratic equation. Okay, so if we have ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, and you're trying to solve this, then you would use this formula. Okay, and so the a and the b are the coefficients, and then c is your constant, and you use those numbers in the quadratic formula. Let's label this just to be clear, okay? So this right here is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation, and then this right here is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula helps us solve the solutions the quadratic equation. All right, let's uh, let's go back to that example we just tried doing with factoring, and let's try the quadratic formula on it. Okay, 
So when you look at the problem, some people like to take, uh, take their pen and kind of label, label the values. So on top of the A value, your coefficient here is A, this is B, this is C. Some people like to say the A value is 1, the B value is 5, the C value is 1, just so it's clearly labeled. Okay, so let's use a strategy that works for you, especially careful when there's negatives. Okay, and now I'm going to solve with the quadratic formula. Don't forget to say x is equal to, x equals, okay, negative b. The opposite of b would be a negative 5, plus and minus, b has to get squared. 5 squared is 25, minus 4. And we have A and C. Your A and your C numbers are both 1, all over 2A. 2 times 1 is just a 2. Okay, a couple things. Your radical sign has to cover up all this work. Okay, and it's all over 2A. Big fraction bar. Both of those things. Okay, and let's do some simplifying here. We've got 25 minus 4, that's a 21 all over 2. I don't think 21 can square root. Uh, I can't break him down with a factor tree. Okay, and so these are the two solutions. x is equal to 5 plus radical 21 divided by 2. Negative 5 minus radical 21 over 2. So if I take a look at a graph, negative 5 plus, this is like 4 point something, all over 2, that's going to give us like negative, negative between 0 and 1, so it's going to be like right there. Uh, negative 5 minus 4 point something, that's going to be negative 9 point something over 4, so that's going to be like between 4 and 5, so there's the other x-intercept, and then we have a parabola opening up. Okay, oh I get it. The reason I couldn't figure them out, okay, is because the answers are decimals. Let's just make a note here, okay? The answers, the answers are radicals that can't be simplified, okay? We call that irrational. They're irrational. Decimals that go for it, but we never would have guessed those, okay? This answer is exact. We're going to keep it just like that. Let's try another one, okay? When I'm looking at a quadratic equation, the first thing I want to try to do is fact. That would be the easiest way, of course. So can I make, can I make a 7? The only thing to do there would be 7 and 1. Is there any way to get this guy to factor? No, you're never going to make a 2. Okay, so step 1, you try factoring. Okay, you pray for factoring. And if it doesn't, okay, step 2, well then resort to the quadratic formula. Okay, x is equal to your a and your b and your c. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of that goes over to a. How does this simplify? Uh, let's see. 4, 4 minus 28 all over 2. So we have plus or minus radical, uh-oh, negative 24. How can I simplify a radical? Wait, can we even take the square root of a negative? Oh, no, hang on. This isn't irrational. This just doesn't even exist. Okay, you cannot square root. Cannot square root. Negatives. Remember, we studied a whole chapter of, on domain. This is impossible. So I'm trying to solve, and I'm not getting any. I'm not getting any what? There is no solution. There's no solution. Or you could use that symbol. No solution. Okay. So what's happening? Does this still make a parabola? Absolutely. There is still a parabola here. Okay. There's still a parabola. But what's going on? There's no solution, no solution. Um, the parabola cannot touch the x-axis. The parabola is opening up, 
but is not allowed to touch the x-axis, that means the parabola must be up somewhere like this. Okay, no solution means no x-intercepts. But there's still a parabola. There's still a parabola. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, um, the discriminant okay, is kind of a shortcut. It's kind of a shortcut. The discriminant formula is actually part of this formula. It's the part right there under the radical. If you just take a look at this, okay, that is the discriminant. Okay. Why would anyone want to do just the calculation under the radical as a shortcut? Well, kind of like this situation down here. If we just did the calculation under the radical and got a negative, we would have known, don't waste our time. We would have known that. So let's go ahead and say the discriminant formula is, um, it's the b squared minus 4ac part. It's just the calculation under the radical, okay? And what does that do? It tells us how many, how many solutions there are. How many solutions there are, okay? So it's like a shortcut. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, okay, so if the discriminant is positive, under the radical is positive, kind of like how we had in that first example. If it's positive, we're going to get two x-intercepts, okay? Then there are two solutions. Then there are two solutions. Or you could say x-intercepts. So it's definitely going to touch two times. The parabola could be opening up or it could be opening down, but it's going to touch two times. It's going to touch two times. Okay, that's the first case. Now, if the discriminant part, this is under the radical, is less than zero. So if your discriminant ends up negative, what happens? Then there's zero solutions. There's zero solutions. Okay, do not touch the x-axis. No x-intercepts. The parabola can be opening a variety of ways. It could be opening up like this, okay? Just don't touch the x-axis, or okay, or maybe it's opening up down like this. Don't touch the x-axis. Okay, and then there's that third category. What if it equals to zero exactly? If it equals to zero, okay, then there's only one solution, okay, or one x-intercept. Okay, and how do you have one x-intercept? That's where it's just going to brush the x-axis. Maybe the parabola opens up, okay, or maybe the parabola opens down. I feel like we should have drawn a parabola opening down over here just to be fair, okay? You could have the parabola also opening down like this. Okay, now he's got his open up and down too. Okay, let's use the quadratic function to answer a bunch of questions. How many x-intercepts does he have? I'm going to try that shortcut. When it says how many, okay, what you do is you use the discriminant. You use the discriminant just to answer that question, okay? So b squared minus 4ac. Let's see what our values are. Uh, the a is 1, b is negative 4, c is negative 5, okay? So I'm going to say the discriminant is the b number squared. So that's negative 4, which has to get squared, minus 4ac. That's a 1. That's a negative 5. So we've got 16. Negative 10 times negative is positive. It's coming up positive. It's coming up positive. Okay. How many x-intercepts? Uh, there are two x-intercepts. Okay. Because this ended up positive. There are two x-intercepts. The parabola touches twice. Okay? If there are some, find them. Oh, okay, so this was just me figuring out how many. Okay, how do you find x-intercepts? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try is factoring. Because factoring is easier and just comes out nicer. 
And then the second thing that you could try is the quadratic formula. Okay, if they're not nice numbers, we could get the, the irrational ones. So let's see. Does this problem factor? Let's try. It's got to be x times x, right? How about a 5? Well, 5 and 1 is the only way, but can that make a negative 4? Well, I think if we put a negative on the 5 and a positive on the 1, that would work. Yay, okay. So what are the x-intercepts? 5 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Yay, okay. So we didn't have to do the quadratic formula. We were able to factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this uh, parabola drawn here a little bit. We've got 5 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Okay, does anybody know... Um, what the y-intercept is for this function. How do you find a y-intercept? That's right, you let x equal 0. Okay. So what is the y-intercept for this quadratic? It's going to be 0, negative 5. Okay. And now, um, so let's see, step 1, uh, graph the x-intercepts. Step 2, how about the y-intercept? And then step three, which way does this open? Which way does this open? Okay, so here's the things you should think about to draw a sketch. Okay, just a quick little sketch of a parabola. Since it's positive, it's going to be opening up. Opening up, okay. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go like this. Touch that y-intercept. Go like this, opening up. Does this quadratic have a max or a min? min? Oh, it's got a minimum point. Okay, it has a minimum point. It has a minimum point, okay? Um, that question is actually super easy. A lot of people kind of get tripped up on it, so let's just write some notes here, okay? There's only two ways that you could have a parabola, right? Either the parabola opens up or the parabola opens down. Now, whether you have a max or a min is going to get real easy in just a second. All parabolas opening up, okay, take a look at the vertex point. If you're opening up, you automatically have a minimum. And if you're opening down, you automatically have a maximum point, okay? So I always draw a quick little sketch of parabolas opening up down so I can get that question right. Good job, pre -calc.